graph in quadratics. Uh, we're going to use factoring, um, just because we haven't learned quadratic formula yet. And the vertex formulas, which is completing the square without all the process. Instead, we memorize the formula. So um, let's talk about what we're in here. First of all, we're in standard form. So this is what our questions be given to us. Uh, x squared plus 8x plus 7. So first thing I want to do is relate it to our standard here. Okay, we'll put standard. And which would be the a value in our numbers? Or what would the coefficient here be for a? Do you know? If nothing's there, what number's written? Uh, 1. Yeah. What would the b value be? 8. Yeah, positive 8. And what would the c value be? Positive 7. Positive 7. Perfect. This wouldn't work for us. No, according to this, it does. Okay, um, so we're in the standard form, and we're going to factor first. Okay, so we're going to factor. So we're going to get it into this form. And then there's from here, there's a couple things we can do. We can use something called finding the axis of symmetry, where you add things together, divide by 2, and then plug in a y value. Or we can use these formulas to help us find the vertex form, and they are from our standard form. So it looks really, really confusing to start. But let's focus on the first thing. We're going to factor. So y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7, I believe it is. Okay, and let's see. So what we'll do actually, uh, x squared plus 8x plus 7. Great. So here's what we should graph. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to verify this information. So, so we should get two x-intercepts, one at negative 7, one at negative 1. We should get a vertex at negative 4, negative 9, and we should get a y-intercept at 0, 7. We'll assume not just a little. So this is the type of information we should be looking to get. Okay. Now, in standard form, there's only one piece of information we find really, really quickly, and that's the y-intercept. Okay. The y-intercept uh, is the only piece of really graphing information we get from this. And what it is, it's when x is 0. Okay, so when x is 0, the y-intercept is whatever the c value is. Okay, so in this case, it's the number 7. So we have a coordinate on the graph. It doesn't help too much, but it does give us a point. Okay, and the reason for that is because when x is 0, we would plug 0 here and 0 here, and they would end up being zeros, and we'd just be left with 7. Okay, so one piece of information. That's good. The next thing we want to do is find the x-intercepts, and we'll factor to do that. So x-intercepts. Okay, and there's probably going to be two, and as we saw before, there is. Um, now, depending how you were taught to factor, there's so many, many different ways. Um, a lot of times what they'll do is something called where you find two numbers that multiply to the A times the C value and add to the B. Do they do that with you? Uh, yeah. That's the one they do with you? Okay, there's so many. We've got tons of videos on it, but let's try that one. So A times C. Well, luckily here, the A value is 1, so this is really simple. I need two numbers that multiply to 7, and those same two numbers need to add to our number 8. Okay, so when I think about it, well, it's probably going to be 1 and 7. Yeah, that's really simple. Great. So what they do from here for you guys normally, so you have your x squared plus, we'll rewrite it again, plus 7, and they split this term, right? They split into 1x plus 7x, and they're both positive, so we have plus signs in front of them. So that's the B term. They've split it into two. Um, we still have our x squared and we still have our plus seven. Okay, y is equal to that. And then they common factor the first pair or the first two terms and they common factor the second two terms. In the first term, we can take x out and that would leave us with x plus one. Does that make sense? Okay. And what would we common factor out of the second term? What would come out there? Let's say we took the x out, so essentially we divided this by x. Wait, why would it be plus 1? Because um, we factored out x, so these two x's cancel out or create a 1, so there's only one left. And here, they kind of get rid of the squared, so you're left with that x. In the second one, the number 7 can come out of both. So we're our plus 7. So we're dividing all those terms by 7. So 7x seven divides 7 is x, and 7 divides 7 is 1. Is this the style of factoring they do with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and now they have this. These are technically common factors, but the way they probably teach you to do it is you just leave that set of brackets, you make it 1, and then the other set of brackets, it's whatever was common factored out, so the x and the 7, and lo and behold, we've got 
your factored form. Now, this actually gives us information. We set both these brackets equal to 0. Okay, We set them both equal to 0, so x plus 1 equals 0, and x plus 7 equals 0, and we solve for x. When I move 1 to the other side, it becomes negative 1. When I move 7 to the other side, it becomes negative 7. And lo and behold, our x-intercepts are negative 1, and well, that's when y is 0, and negative 7 and 0. So if we go look, we've got the 0, negative 7, that's a y-intercept, negative 1, 0, and negative 7, 0. Boom, we figured out two pieces. The last piece here is the vertex. And there's lots of different ways we can go about this. Um, because we have this information, a lot of times what they'll teach you, I'm going to do this really quick. Negative 1 plus negative 7, they tell you to add them, divide by 2, that becomes negative 8. Uh, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, that's the x value of the vertex. Then they tell you, go ahead, plug it back into the equation. That's common. Another way you could do this is you could use these little formulas here from standard form. Okay? And I'm going to show you this because it's a good way to go to vertex form from standard form without having to use this intermediate step. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite our standard form again. Whoops, we'll write it in black here. y equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. Okay, the x value of the vertex I told you was equal to negative b divided by 2, a. Okay, well my b value is 8 and my a value is 1, so I plug those in. Really standard, just formula stuff. Negative, this becomes 8. Divided by 2, my a value is 1, okay? And I just have to work that out. This becomes negative 8 divided by 2, and negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. That's exactly what we found before, right? When I did that really, really quick one. The y value of the vertex, a little more complicated this one, is c minus b squared over 4a, okay? Uh, we already know our a, we already know our b, the last thing we need is our c, and our c value is 7. So, 7 subtract, the b value is 8, so 8 squared, divided by 4 times 1. Okay. Again, just a little math, and it's 7 essentially subtract this entire fraction. So 7 minus this becomes 64, and that becomes 4, so 64 divided by 4, and that's going to be 7 subtract 1, 6, I think it's 16. Yeah, that should be right. And then 7 subtract 16 gives us negative 9. So your vertex, the x value is negative 4, the y value is negative 9. So you didn't have to complete the square, which is a really long process. You didn't have to find the axis of symmetry and plug it back in. And really with this info, you can even write the vertex form. The vertex form is usually x minus h, where the h value is this. Okay, so it would be minus negative 4. So minus negative 4, do you know what we can turn that into? Or minus negative 4? Positive 4. Yeah, that's right. We can turn that into positive 4. Subtract 9. And the only thing I'm missing is the a value. And if you look way at the top here, it turns out the a values are the same term every single time. Okay, so what was my a value? It was 1. So the a value down here is 1. And let's check that vertex. Is it negative 4, negative 9? Exactly what we saw. So ton of info. That's a lot of information on one like little thing. That's every piece of a quadratic you'd probably be asked to graph. 